money, except that it's not. Uh, not all money is created equal. Money that is, belongs to your business needs to be held within that business. You cannot commingle personal and business funds. So one of my next suggestions is you need to have a separate account for your business activity. Open up a bank account, a checking account, something for your business. Get a debit card. Get a credit card connected to that. Make sure you have separate business accounts. You cannot commingle this because it gets very difficult to untangle it. It's like untangling spaghetti. It's real easy before you put it in the pot, but once it's been all in the pot boiling together, it's really hard to separate it out. So you got to keep it separate from the beginning. Sole proprietorships, partnerships, limited liability co companies, limited liability partnerships are all organizations that require you to pay tax on your share of the earnings. Here's the crummy part. Not crummy. Interesting part. Even if you don't pull all the money out of the partnership, you still have to pay tax on your share of those earnings. So things that you're personally reinvesting, you still got to pay tax on some of that. So it's important that you know what everything is. Now, you have to keep track of it because you need to know what everything is. Now, all revenue sources. Most small businesses are dealing with individuals and businesses in general and their cash basis. So when you get any sort of payment, a down payment, deposit, something like that, that's cash coming in, that's revenue. You need to keep track of all of your revenue. On the other hand, you have to keep track of all of your business expenses. Rent on a facility, utilities for a facility. Do you have a business phone line, a business internet connection, subscriptions to certain magazines or periodicals that possibly considered in this, supplies for that business, employee wages, maintenance on the facility, all of these are expenses. You don't pay tax on that. So you take your revenue and then you subtract out all of those expenses. And then you look at assets that you purchase for the business. You can't subtract those out straight away. There's different rules depending on what it is. Now, you, there's this, a concept known as depreciation rules. You kind of spread the cost of something over a long period of time. And there's different depreciation rules. This is one of those areas, if you're buying a lot of assets for your business, you probably want to talk to an accountant because they're going to help you decide how you want to take that depreciation. Um, so you subtract some of that. You look at all your assets that you purchased in the business. Any money you've taken out, you have to pay yourself, but you're not an employee if it's a partnership. You have to pull some money out. You need to earn some money yourself, but uh, you can't be an employee of your own partnership. So you have to keep track of the distributions you've taken already. All of this you keep track of. And it becomes a paperwork nightmare at times because it's a lot to keep track of. And you don't have to have a big fancy computer system. Okay? All you have to really do is be able to write it down in a notebook and keep track of receipts. And I've seen a lot of people who keep five subject notebooks and stash receipts in the pockets. And there's nothing wrong with that as a way to start. But eventually, you're probably going to want to take it beyond that mm -hmm. just a little bit because you're going to need some help. And how can you do that? Well, there's a couple different computer programs. I will not make a suggestion for any specific one because it depends on what you need. Um, <clears throat> some of them will help you with bookkeeping. Some of them help with general business organization. Some can help with uh, more accounting in general that's a little bit beyond the bookkeeping. Some of these are cloud-based. Some are machine-based. Now, 